presentation tonight is from Eric and Thomas from Ledger Wallet, and they're going to be giving a presentation on what's up next with hardware wallets. So first I will just 
take an address from my wallet, and then I'm going to send, for instance, one Bitcoin. And this is a real critical operation. When you are going to sign a transaction, it means that you need a private key, you need to have it not encrypted, and in traditional software-based wallet, it will be in the memory of the computer. And this is where you are at risk. Here, all the signature is done inside the hardware wallet. But you need to make sure of what you are going to sign. Because if it works as an oracle, like signing everything without verifying, if you have a malware on the computer, it can just modify the destination address or the amount, and then it will sign something and you will lose your Bitcoin. This is why we use a secure... Yes? So are these real Bitcoins? The yes. <laughs> this is not testnet, it's a live net. Uh, and you, you need to make sure of uh, the transaction of the destination address. And in this particular uh, example, I have paired my um, uh, smartphone to uh, the hardware wallet and I just have been pushed. So on, on the push that I received, I can see exactly what is the transaction that I have done. And, I, and it asks me to confirm that I really want to send one Bitcoin to this address. And this is a secure operating between the hardware wallet and this phone. It means that you need to have the phone to make uh, the payment. That means that even if you take uh, my hardware wallet and you take my PIN, if you do not have the phone or a physical security card, in case I, I don't have the phone with me, then you cannot make any transaction. And it is connected using uh, web sockets uh, securely. And now if I'm going to confirm the transaction, it will go through, it will sign the transaction again inside the secure element, which means the private keys will never be revealed to the host. And so even if this computer is uh, with keyloggers, with uh, all the malware that you can think of, there is no way that they will be able to steal the private keys or take the bitcoins. So this is uh, an example of how we can use a hardware wallet. And once it's signed, it will give back to the computer the signed transaction, which is not critical information, and it will just uh, send it to the Bitcoin network. So this is, let's say, the first kind of uh, hardware wallet. It is uh, very compact and it is very resilient. Um, and of course, you can ask yourself, what happens if you lose it? Uh, so if you lose it, of course, you have what we call a BIP39 backup. It is 24 words where you can write on a piece of paper. Uh, and that you will put in a safe, in a bank, you know, because you need to still have uh, no some... Banks. Uh, <laughs> no banks. <laughs> no banks. No banks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so if you lose it, you can always restore uh, your seed and get access to your bitcoins. And you do not have to use a ledger wallet. It's, it's, a, it's a standard. And it also means that even if our company goes out of business, uh, you will not lose your Bitcoin. It is a, a trustless solution in the way that you do not require us to be alive to continue to keep your Bitcoin. This is uh, very important uh, because you never know what can happen. And uh, the... Sorry? I didn't hear you. <laughs> Winter phone, maybe. <laughs> So it's okay. <laughs> I feel safe. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it for? <laughs> okay. Um, so this is a first example of hardware wallet, uh, and it says that the limitation that it has it is uh, you need to have a laptop or a computer with a full USB port. It cannot uh, connect to. Uh, 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 a mobile wallet. Um, well, it can on some Androids, but uh, for instance, it cannot on uh, iOS. And uh, the next generation of hardware wallets is to have the ubiquity of connection, which means that you can use with your laptop, with your mobile, uh, so it's, uh, it's easier to, to use in all the circumstances. Um, also, the problem with hardware wallets, you can say it's hardware. It, it means that you need to buy something. Uh, you need to, it comes in a box, 
Okay, so you need to buy it. It's not very expensive. It's like seventy dollars, but still, uh, it can be a pain point uh, because you need to find it, you need to buy it, you need to receive it, you need to have some motivation, um, and it can be, let's say, a difficulty to to scale. So the other approach is to use what uh, we call the secure zone of the smartphones. The technical name is trusted execution environment, and I'm going to to, to show that uh, after. And finally, we can also see what we can do with the open architecture and API from the major, from the, the hardware wallets. Um, so the next generation is to use just compactless uh, hardware wallets. Um, right now, the Trezor and the Ledger Nano use the USB. Uh, you have the Case wallet, which is uh, uh, Wi-Fi, well, the GSM, yes. Uh, so it, uh, it doesn't need uh, uh, a computer to work. And you also the next generation that we are going to release in September, which is the same thing that the Nano, uh, but with um, uh, an NFC card, which we work on, on Android phones. The same thing that when you need to, uh, to sign something, you just tap. If it's a multi-signature, you do not need a second factor. But if it's not multi-signature, then you need also to have a second factor using a security card. So, trusted execution environment. This is the secure zone of the smartphones I was uh, talking about. Now, in all the recent Samsung phones, you have this T, which has been designed by Trustonic. And basically, it's a virtual machine running in a secure environment. It is exactly like having a smart card or a secure element, but in a virtualized way. Uh, when you are running inside the secure zone, there is absolutely no way from the Android OS to communicate or to take control of this zone. So it is exactly like you would have a virtualized hardware wallet inside your phone. So the big advantage is that you get all the same um, securities and the secure elements, like a dedicated hardware wallet, but you can just download it. So it is much easier to use, and it looks like that. So there are pictures, they are not screenshots, because you cannot do screenshots, in fact, of a secure element, of a, a trusted execution environment, because all the layers of the Android uh, operating system are completely disabled. So what is running, it's just our operating system. It's uh, running on the C level. Um, and all the UI is a trusted UI, which means that you cannot sc uh, take screenshots. If you put press on the buttons of the Android, it will do uh, nothing. And it will be a secure zone where, where again, we have a full management of the private key. Um, we are going to release the beta version of uh, the, the TrustLet. This is the name of this product. And it will work with uh, Android and uh, Green Address. So, yeah, uh, Mycelium and Green Address. And we expect in two weeks, uh, once uh, some of the certificates will be uh, uh, propagated by, by Samsung. Um, no, on iPhone it is a closed. Uh, they do not have this kind of uh, of technology. It's a little bit different, but right now there is no possibility. It will be so only on the iPhone. Keychain, basically, you can use keychain, but you, you cannot you, you cannot choose to store some data in it, some private keys, some. Uh, some uh, words for to make the seed, but you cannot like uh, sign the transaction within the, the keychain, the secure enclave of iPhone. That's a limitation of iOS. And then, uh, if you are interested, we can show you a demonstration on the, on the, our phones of how it looks. And it works right now on the Galaxy Note 4 and on the Samsung S6. Uh, and the prediction is that next year, a lot of the Samsung mostly all the high-end Samsung uh, phones will have the Trustonic uh, Trusted Edition environment uh, embedded. Is it something part of the Knox, Samsung Knox? No, it is, uh, it is something different. Uh, it's, it's the same ID, uh, but it is not the same, it's not exactly the same, uh, uh, the same system. Also, uh, with all these hardware wallets, usually you have like API, uh, you can do a lot of things, and you can do third-party integrations. Uh, for instance, with uh, the, the Ledger Nano, you can also use the key, uh, the, the hardware wallet, to host a key from a multi-signature um, wallet with uh, um, 
uh, with code guides and uh, soon with uh, copay. Uh, right now, if you want to do multi-signature, like for instance, you are an enterprise and you want to do uh, five of 10 to make your payments, uh, the, the, the pain point is the management of the keys because it's five, you need to add them on your computers. And if you use the key, in fact, you can uh, very easily uh, distribute them and you just need to connect and sign. Uh, and we have we have uh, launched um, enterprise solutions where you can just buy a pack of 10 hardware wallets. Uh, so it's easy for enterprises to, uh, to do multi-signature. Also, you can do uh, identity, uh, you can do login, third-party login, two-factor authentication just using these uh, hardware wallets. So there is a lot of things that you can develop in the future. And of course, all compatibility with uh, crypto assets um, because this is uh, something which will be uh, quite uh, used uh, in the future. So, if you have uh, any questions, we'll be happy to, uh, to answer them. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we have a test coin, uh, a test coin, a test net. 
uh, and also it will work with uh, Litecoin, Dogecoin, or there is uh, as long as we have uh, blockchain APIs to uh, be able to uh, get blockchain information, and then we can. Uh, it's possible to compile the app to uh, to work with Litecoin, Dogecoin, so it will be supported uh, uh, in September or something. Right, but I have to contact you guys. Obviously, I have to contact you guys. Yeah, if you want to, to add support of any altcoin, you just need to contact us. Uh, there is some requirements. It needs to be uh, aged, like to be BIP32, BIP44, uh, BIP39. So uh, <laughs> there are some requirements, but, uh, and a blockchain explorer. Yeah, I Um, it's only, it works only on the Bitcoin network. It means that you cannot really connect your credit card to uh, this kind of hardware wallet. But with uh, the NFC version of the hardware wallet, it is possible, in fact, to pay uh, on the checkout on the payment terminal using exactly the same tokenization systems that Apple Pay. The only limitation is that you need to find a partnership with a card uh, issuer which will give you, in fact, the connection to the banking world. So technically, it's possible, but it is quite complex to obtain such partnership with banks or uh, whatever, uh, because I'm not so much uh, ready or wanting to, to, uh, to explore this kind of uh, integration. But uh, it's possible to do it. It will be, it's in theory, possible to pay uh, just with the NFC and hardware wallets. Uh, with bitcoins and your and credit cards. But today, if you need uh, so much effort for uh, the, the state of the, the, the yeah, usage connection with the bank or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, you will need to find a bank who will uh, give you uh, an API to generate virtual credit cards or tokens uh, so you, you could pay on normal terminals. So it's theoretically it's possible. Uh, we had such a list license at the time, but once they understood we were doing Bitcoin, they, they just. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I did it. Can you tell me more of the trusted execution of the Bitcoin? Yeah, it's like a virtual machine. So, um, the, the, CPU, the CPU just changed a bit, and it goes in a different world with a different memory, a different uh, stack of execution, and uh, it just runs an operating system. And it's not Android, it is our operating system, the Ledger OS, so it's very low level. All the code is in the C. Uh, so for instance, if you want to, to, to show an image, uh, well, everything we have, we have to do everything from scratch. Um, and this secure operating system uh, cannot be um, uh, accessed by the Android system, which means that if you have a, a malware or like a, an attack vector on your Android uh, phone, it is not possible for this malware to go inside this secure virtual machine, which means that it's, you have the same kind of certification and guarantees as a secure element, a smart card, which has been used by the banking system for decades, and uh, it gives you a very strong protection, uh, which means that it wouldn't be able, it wouldn't be possible, in fact, to extract uh, the secrets, like your seed, even if they physically got access to the, uh, to the smartphone. So it's, it's a secure virtual machine. There's somebody from Trustonic here, so maybe if you... Yeah, yeah. this guy is from Trustonic, so you can, you you can, yeah. you can explain to him instead, so it works. Is all of your code for that OS on your GitHub and open? <laughs> no, it's um, our, our firmware is not open source. We have specifications, but uh, why it is not open source? It's because we had to sign NDAs with uh, the, 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 the chip manufacturer and the APIs are not public. So it is not because we do not want to publish the source code, but one, uh, we cannot because of the NDAs, because we do not have the right to expose the APIs of the secure elements. And so it wouldn't be possible for anyone to compile because to have access to the SDK of secure elements or anything, you need, in fact, to sign NDAs with uh, the uh, chip manufacturer. So if you cannot compile, you cannot build it yourself, then it cannot help because uh, um, you, you cannot go to the, to the end. So, but the, so 
all the rest is open source. Everything that we can open source is can open you use source. The Everything that uh, can be open source is open source. So the Chrome app, uh, the, the, the iPhone apps, the Android apps, all the companion apps are, are open source. And also, it's um, uh, when you write code on the on the on the on the smart card, it's like a, a tamper-proof code that's provable. And we have a very, very detailed specification so that anybody can test against the specification and see if the smart card acts the way it should act. So you can test the uh, generation C, uh, if you can export the private keys, if you, if you can do all that, and you can verify that uh, it really acts the way it was specified. So, where are my 500 bitcoins? <laughs> So it, it asks, it just asks the chip to sign a challenge, and because the private key is the ledger private key inside, then it can prove that it's a real one. Uh, so even if someone tries to change it, put it with something else, as they do not have our private keys, then uh, the challenge will fail, and then you will see that it, it has been tampered. Thank you. 